you're slow, or you want to get more explosive for sports, where you like competitive fighting, this one's for you. What am I doing with this blender? Let's go. What's up, what's up, what's up? My name is Mark and this is Train All Sports and I hope you're doing well because I want to put a bigger smile on your face by going over the little things that make a huge difference in your overall physical ability. I have gotten a lot of questions about what type of weight training should be done for athletes and especially fighters who want to get more explosive but not gaining weight or getting bulky. You know, we don't want to be like those guys at the beach who look like they lift a lot of weight and then they go throw a football and it goes like 20 yards because they're so stiff and uncoordinated. Yeah, let's avoid that and introduce a new concept called blending. Blending is the street name for a training approach that changes the stimulus on your body as frequently as possible. Now get into a very refined version of blending in just a little bit, but for now, I hope you are thinking, why would anyone want to constantly change their training? Wouldn't that make you a jack of all trades and a master of none? And the answer to that is pretty simple. Your body does not like change, and it wants to be lazy. It wants you to stay in your current status quo, and any deviation from that status quo requires effort that your body does not want to expend. It's a survival tactic. And the unfortunate part of that status quo is your current workout routine is also wrapped up inside of the survival tactic. So when you begin a new workout, you'll have an initial adaptation. That requires effort on your body. And after that initial adaptation, you'll begin to experience diminishing returns because your body gets used to the exercises you're performing. It has adapted to make things easier on you, and that's really nice if you're surviving, but not nice if you're trying to push the limits. See, in layman's terms, you'll have to work twice as hard to get the same amount of improvement. And this is why so many people, when you see them go for jogs all the time, and they're like, I can't lose weight, I can't lose weight. It's because their body is adjusted to the routine and is trying to make it easier on them and expend as little energy as possible. So let's take a look at blending from a general standpoint, and I'll get into the refined version that's becoming more and more popular among advanced athletes and trainers. And right now, if you like this type of information, now is a great time to subscribe to the channel, like the video, and always, always, always be socially responsible and share this video with others. Moving on, we will use punching force as our goal that we want to increase. And this could easily be changed to jumping, throwing, sprinting, or anything that involves a lot of power in a short amount of time. So you want a serious haymaker, you want that knockout punch, and you do bench press, you do push-ups, you strengthen your core, you do all the things you read about and look about on the internet, and it seems to be going nowhere. And that's probably why you're here, because you've hit that point of diminishing returns where you're, the amount of effort you're putting in, you're not getting the same amount of results. So instead, let's examine the bench press and blend multiple types of bench presses and that movement into a single workout phase. So first of the blending technique, we're gonna use heavy weight. We'll use bench press at 85% of your one rep max. Then you're going to do less weight and high reps until burnout, and we'll say that's at 50% of your one rep max. Then the next set, you're gonna go back to the heavy weights at 85% of your one rep max for set three. Set four, you drop the weight to 20% of your maximum and you do explosive bench presses. Then finally, you're gonna hit the final set where you fired back up to 70% of your one rep max and you're gonna do a slow eccentric exercise until you're completely burned out. Now, does that sound crazy? I hope it does a little bit and that's just an example of blending. And now I don't suggest you go out and repeat exactly what I just said in your workouts as I just spit something off the top of my head, but I was able to effectively come up with something by understanding the force velocity curve. And that's imperative for the refined version that we're about to get into. For those of you who aren't familiar with the force velocity curve, I suggest you check out my video on how to gain strength without gaining weight for a little more background. But for now, let's examine what I just did. So starting off with heavy weight, we hit maximum strength. Then we drop down to 50% of our one rep max to train speed strength. Then we went back up to max strength, and we went down to reactive strength, and then we finally ended with strength speed through an eccentric contraction. And by doing this, we never allowed our body to adapt to a single exercise and get lazy. It never knew what was going to come next, so it had to prepare for everything or be totally unprepared. That's fine. 
And when it does that, you'll get serious performance gains because over time, you're going to train everything rather than just one single thing over and over again. It's a very controlled chaos. All right, our next step, as promised, we're going to look at a blending tool that is quickly becoming popular and that's called the French contrast method. And I've saved this for later in the video because without understanding the basics of blending and the force velocity curve, the French contrast method would be harder to understand. The French contrast method was designed to give athletes maximum power and peak performance. Good, that's why we're here. It utilizes a heavy to light reps that work up and down the force velocity curve, as I just mentioned. In its essence, you'll be performing a heavy weighted exercise, a body weight plyometric exercise that is similar to the heavy weight exercise you just did, then an accelerative exercise that is assisted, and finally, you can add the athletic movement you want to perform better at. Don't worry, we're going to get into the punch right now. So let's get back into the haymaker, the knockout punch, and we're going to use the bench press as our example. Using the French contrast method, you will do a heavy bench press. And then we'll say again, that's 85% of your one rep max. Then the next set, you will do an explosive push up for a plyometric. Those will typically be somewhere between three and five reps. You don't want to burn yourself out on being explosive. Keep that in mind, it's very important, or you won't be able to work on total speed and power. Then you will go into assisted bench press, a push up, or even a punch. So anything that you can use bands for would be a good idea here. A lot of people like to put the bands up top on the bench press so they can explode it up. You can wrap a band around you so you accelerate your torso very quickly when you throw a punch. There's a lot, a lot of creative things that you can do. Just use your brain and think about it. And then lastly, if you want, you can choose just a good old straight punch right into a punching bag to try and connect those forces all together into one motion. And you can see that if you examine this through the lens of the force velocity curve, you can train up and down the curve. You can ride the slide and you can see what you are trying to connect immediately to the next exercise. Max strength to speed, speed to strength, up and down. And if you think of it this way, you will begin to overload your body for maximum force and develop that force through the speed which will get you nice and strong, able to adapt, not gain any weight, and really have some explosive power. And that's because you're training your neuromuscular system quickly and effectively. Blending is a powerful technique that is used by world-class athletes. And I hope I answered many of your comments and you learned something new. Looking forward, I hope you drop me more comments. Don't be shy, leave them right now. I'll see you in the next video.